Mass spectrometry is a technique invented in the late 1800s that measures a molecule's mass. While there are many different variations on the technique, they all involve the same basic steps. First, a sample of a molecule, we'll call it M, is ionized, given a charge. Sometimes this is done by protonating it with an acid to make M plus H plus, and sometimes by knocking off an electron to make M plus. Either way, this newly charged species, called the molecular ion, is accelerated into a chamber where its motion is influenced by highly controlled electric and magnetic fields. Because the momentum and trajectory of a charged particle depend on its mass and charge, particles of different masses move differently in the chamber, with different speeds or paths. Eventually, the charged particles are detected, and based on when and where they reach the detector, their masses can be determined. The data produced by a mass spectrometer is a graph called a mass spectrum. The x-axis is m over z, or the mass to charge ratio. For our purposes, since most of the ions have a single positive charge, this is equivalent to the mass. The y-axis is abundance, or counts, which just means the number of ions to re reach the detector. A peak in the spectrum tells you that a certain number of molecular ions with a particular mass were present in the original sample. A typical mass spectrum looks something like this. You'll often see several clusters of peaks. The cluster with the highest mass is the one we will always focus on. It's the one that tells us the molecular mass of the sample. The peaks with smaller masses are called fragment peaks, and they result from the ions breaking apart or fragmenting during the experiment. For our purposes, they're not very informative, so we're just going to ignore them in Chem 203. But why do peaks show up in clusters? Each cluster usually has one large peak and smaller peaks, one or two masses higher. The smaller peaks represent molecules that contain heavier isotopes than the most common ones. For instance, most molecules of butane, C4H10, contain four carbon-12 atoms and 10 hydrogen-1 atoms, so have a mass of 58 AMU. But about 1.1% of naturally occurring carbon atoms are the isotope carbon-13. So a small number of butane molecules have one carbon-13 atom in them, and therefore a mass of 59 AMUs. Most of the time, we won't bother much with the small peaks corresponding to these heavier isotopomers, but there are a few instances where those peaks give us some easy-to-identify information. There are two elements, common in organic molecules, that have very distinctive isotope patterns. Chlorine has two commonly occurring isotopes, Cl35 and Cl37, in about a 3 to 1 ratio. And bromine has two isotopes, bromine-79 and bromine-81, in about a 1 to 1 ratio. So a molecule that contains one of these atoms will have a distinctive cluster of molecular ion peaks, with larger peaks two mass units higher than the main peak.